everyone, Ed Bond, Karen Roby here for ZDNet. Ed, uh, as always, thanks for being with us. Uh, your article here that you put together, really in, in, uh, informative, I think, for people uh, regarding uh, these password managers built into the browser. And I have to say, I don't know if I'm right, wrong, somewhere in between uh, when it comes to passwords. I don't store them anywhere. Well, I, I do kind of hear, which is a little scary because there have been many times I've forgotten and have to change again, all that good stuff. Uh, but a lot of people do use these password managers, uh, which you know can, has proven to be very helpful. Yeah, it, you know, I did uh, I, I did a big uh, guide mm -hmm. a couple months ago to third-party password management tools, and it struck me over the last week or so. I was looking at the capabilities that are built into the, uh, the the browsers that everybody uses all the time now, and uh, the browser makers are adding password management as a, as a feature in all of these. And in some cases, they're expanding the, uh, the capabilities for these built-in password managers. For example, most of them now have the capability to check your saved passwords against some of these online lists of, of data breaches. So they can warn you if one of your saved passwords has been in a data breach and they can say, you know, you really ought to change this one. But, uh, but you know, these, they're, um, they're not the same as the, the third party uh, password management tools, but they're not bad. They have some advantages. So, you know, the, the biggest advantage is you don't have to download any special tool, uh, install some software on every device that you own. It's just there when you install the browser or when you sign into the browser, uh, that feature is available to you. In fact, most of them, they have it turned on by default. Uh, they automatically sync your passwords that you save along with your bookmarks and your tabs and your browser settings and such. Um, most important of all, I guess, you don't have to pay a subscription fee for these things. And all of the encryption and all of the authentication, you know, two-factor authentication and everything is, uh, is right there in the browser, uh, the same tools that you already use. So they're fairly well protected. And these are big companies. You know, we're talking Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Mozilla. You know, these aren't fly-by-night companies. These are big companies. Now, the disadvantages of using one of these built-in tools are, you know, if you, uh, uh, if you use multiple browsers throughout the day, well, you're kind of stuck because these tools are designed to work with their browser and their browser only. Um, but probably more important is that in general, they have kind of a basic feature set. And you know, a couple examples that I'll give of those. Uh, first of all, most of the third-party password management tools uh, have the capability to generate a safe password for you. So for example, you say, I want a, you know, a password that's 20 characters long, has a mix of upper and lowercase characters and symbols and numbers, something that you can't possibly remember, but your password manager can, and you can tweak things so that they match the capabilities of the site that you're using. Well, with the built-in password managers, you, you don't get the ability to tweak that. They'll generate a password for you, but it will be under their terms and, and uh, you don't have any control over that. Uh, also, uh, with the third-party password management tools, you can share passwords with other members of your family or with other people in your business if you want to. That's a, that's a really useful thing. Like, you know, in my household, my wife and I have a folder full of, of shared accounts. So when we go on Amazon, you, you know, you can, you can use the same account for, uh, for Amazon Prime, for example. You don't have to worry about constantly resetting the passwords and you, you know exactly what's going on there. So that's a nice feature to have. And none of the built-in um, built password managers in the browsers have capabilities like that. Okay, and, and Ed, when you talk about the browsers here, how many uh, or, or, or which ones are, are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the four big browsers. Uh, the biggest one of all, of course, is uh, Google Chrome. And uh, Chrome saves your passwords uh, with your Google account, which means that you can access them on an Android device, on, uh, on, an, on an iPhone or an iPad, if you have the Google app installed. Uh, or of course in the Google Chrome browser on, uh, on a Windows PC or on a Mac. Uh, in fact, you can even, uh, you can look up your passwords just 
in the browser by signing into your Google account and going to the, uh, to the password page. Um, Microsoft Edge, the new Microsoft Edge that's based on the same Chromium code base as Google Chrome, manages passwords in more or less the same way uh, so that if, you know, and it's available on Macs and on Windows PCs. It's also available on Android and iOS devices if you install the Edge browser on, on those devices, but you can't look up your uh, passwords uh, in your Microsoft account online. Those, are, those will sync to your devices, but you can't look them up there. Um, Firefox, uh, a long time browser that is uh, sadly losing popularity, but it still has its loyal fans, um, has actually branded its password management feature. Uh, it's now called Lockwise. And you can even get Lockwise apps for, uh, for your uh, iOS devices or for your Android phones. And those, instead of just working in the browser on those devices, will also work with other apps, which is uh, an interesting approach to take. And then finally, there's Apple. Um, and Apple, of course, does everything a little differently from everything else. Your passwords are saved as part of your iCloud keychain. Um, but then you can use them in the Safari browser uh, once they're saved in the iCloud keychain. And you can do that only on Apple devices because there's no Safari browser and there's no iCloud keychain on Windows PCs or on Android devices. Okay, Ned, finally, I think a, a good question or maybe an obvious one would be, you know, how complicated are we talking about a lot of steps involved here and can someone just ignore this if they want to? Well, I think most people do ignore it. You know, yeah. the, you know, you, you use your browser and every once in a while it pops up and says, oh, do you want to save this password? And sometimes people do and sometimes people don't. And the trouble with that sort of casual haphazard approach to passwords in the browser is that you wind up saving your password sometimes for very important sites um, and they're saved in the cloud. And if you're account ever gets compromised and someone has access not just to your, you know, to your bookmarks, but also to your passwords, which could let them sign into your bank account, your credit cards, and, and so on. So it's probably a good idea to not ignore it. Um, and either if you're going to use the feature, use it. If you're not going to use it, then turn it off and purge those saved passwords that might be out there. And basically what I've done in this article is to outline the four steps that you need to go through for each one of these different browsers, depending on you know, which one you typically use. Um, first step, of course, is to back up your passwords if you can. Uh, you can do that on Chrome, in Edge, and in Firefox, but uh, not on an Apple device. Then turn off the capability to save passwords so that you don't get uh, so that the, the browser doesn't ask you to keep saving those passwords. You know, you just say, stop asking me. I don't want to be asked anymore. Uh, then a step that most people will, uh, will skip, but they shouldn't, is turn off the syncing, the synchronizing of passwords to your browser. Because if you don't do that, then what happens is those, uh, you know, the, the, the next time you update your browser, you're going to find that it's, that it's uh, synced a bunch of passwords down to your device, which you don't want. And then finally, I explain how to go in there and purge any passwords that might be saved. And that's with the expectation that you're going to be using a third party uh, password management tool. Um, and the unfortunate part of that is for Chrome and Edge and Firefox, you have to go through one by one and uh, delete those saved passwords. Uh, it's a little bit tedious. You know, if you've got a dozen or so, it's no big deal. If you have 100 or 200, like, like I found in a couple of my accounts I did, um, you know, it's gonna take you a half hour or so, uh, but it's time well spent because you don't have to worry about that being a security risk for you. Um, now, the good news is if you have an Apple device and you've saved your Safari passwords in the iCloud keychain, you just, uh, you just go to the iCloud keychain you uh, choose this in, in Safari, uh, you press Command A and delete and boom, they're all gone. You don't have to worry about it. And you can use your third party password management tool with confidence. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, very good. Well, that's some great, uh, you know, information, Ed, for people that, uh, you know, uh, may not even realize that it's an, an option. And I know you've got all of this laid out uh, in a great article there and some others as well concerning uh, password managers that are built into the web browsers there. So we certainly hope that everyone will check that out there on ZDNet. And we appreciate all of you watching today. Thank you.